YouTube, Breaver here, and today we are going to be taking a look at this, the Game Face Tryon. Uh, this is a new competition style blaster made by Game Face, originally showcased at End War 2022. Um, I did not get a chance to actually play around with this thing myself, however, I did get a nice overview of how the darts were designed, and you can go check that out here. And there's a timestamp in the video if you want to just go watch that. But, um, as with all of my reviews, we're going to go over the aesthetics of the blaster, what this thing comes with, how it works, take it over to the workbench, open this thing up to see what makes this bad boy so badass, or hopefully badass. And then, if I remember, get some FPS ratings, but definitely give you my final thoughts on this. So... Uh, first off, disclaimer, I did actually purchase this. This was not sent to me, so there. Um, but going over the aesthetics of the blaster, um, it is a pump-action springer. Um, it does, it could seem a little on the small side. I'm honestly not sure how big it is. I want to say maybe about as big as the Nexus. I could be wrong. We'll actually do that when we get over to the workbench. I don't think this is as big as the Swift though. Um, but again, we'll, when we get to the workbench, I'll do size comparison. Not that it matters or anything like that, because this is a very nice blaster. Um, it is all a mono body design, so it does not break down. Um, you do get an adjustable stock on this thing, and it is a thumb hole style stock. Uh, the movable part is proprietary to the way this is designed. Uh, to move it, you just have a little button here which will allow you to adjust it. This is at full, and then if you wanted to, you could actually just slide it off, which does give you access to your spring. Um, so, oh, and that's the other thing. I am going to uh, go over a few of these things that this does maybe a little better, or at least a little bit more unique than its competition. So... You do have that now, and a very, very nice grip here, which, even with the thumb hole, is still a very, very good size. As you can see here, I can fit my full hand on it, and it is not, excuse me, it is not cramped, and it's actually quite comfortable. Um, now, before we move on, I do want to point out one of the first of a few differences that this has over its competition. Um, the Swift has a thumb hole design stock and all of that which you can do a little bit of adjustments but that's all built into the blaster itself the nexus here does have a buffer tube style uh, stock attachment point so you can use um, basically airsoft stocks on here now while this does look like it could have a buffer tube stock it actually does because if you wanted to you can actually remove the red thumb hole stock portion of this and underneath it and you can kind of just see right around it um, that white spot that is an m4 style buffer tube and you can then put on any i believe it's m4 or ar style uh, airsoft grip onto uh to replace the actual grip here so you can basically cust if you don't want the thumb hole stock, you can customize it with air with uh, airsoft parts. So that is kind of honestly a pretty cool feature and gives you already right out of the box uh, some unique customability to the blaster itself without having to paint it or anything like that. Um, moving on to here, you have a full Picatinny style uh, rail on top so you can use um, your uh, red dots or scopes or whatever you want to do to make this more tactical or anything like that it does come with these uh, with these um, iron sights so you do get sights with it if you want um, but I actually have already got a nice new red dot for this and it does fit on the blaster very nicely. Uh, also, just kind of keeping with the attachment points, along the side here you see these slits. 
that's actually M-Lock. So if you have M-Lock attachments that you would like to use on this blaster to just pimp this thing out even more so, you can use those on the sides there. So that is something that I really haven't seen done yet. Um, most I've seen have been the Picatinny attachment points on the side of them. Uh, but yeah, I haven't seen M-Lock yet, so that's kind of new. Uh, moving back to the middle of the blaster, you can see the cutout here, and you can see the pusher there. And you may notice that, like, it looks a little flat, and that's because it is. This actually has a skinny style pusher, so you can take your magazine that it does come with, and it only does come with one magazine, unfortunately, but... You do not have to deprime it in order to get your magazines out now. Unlike the, I'm pretty sure the Swift and the Nexus Pro have full pushers. So this has the skinny pusher, so you can just unload whenever your heart desires. Um, also, this only is designed for half-length darts, so like the Swift, you can use uh, worker magazines. You can also use katana magazines. I will showcase what magazines it will use when we hit the workbench, uh, just because it's, it'll be a little easier for you to see. Um, unlike the Nexus or the Max Striker, which have the full length uh, magazine wells, and then you just need the adapter for it. So, Game Face is already wanting one upping that in this aspect. So. There is that. Uh, as far as the front of the blaster goes, you do it does come with this angled foregrip, uh, which I do have to say is very nice and very comfortable. Um, when I adjust the stock properly, it does make for a very nice grip, and I do like it. Um, I still kind of prefer the shotgun style grips, but I on like the striker and on the swift. But I have to say this is just really nice and it's very comfortable and I really do like this one. Uh, more so than the vertical grips that the uh, Nexus came with or even the Dark Zone Pro Mark 1.1 and that's just my own personal preference. I mean I never switched that one out because I did try use a because it does have the Picatinny underneath it so you can use a if you wanted to switch it out to an angled foregrip. However when with the spring load I have in mind, it doesn't work right, and they actually do pop off, so that's why I leave that one on there. Um, but yeah, so there's that. And then the final little piece on here is this front muzzle brake, which just actually screws right on, and if you wanted to, you can have it facing this way so you have the chevrons, you know, towards enemy. Or if you wanted to, or if you now it's not going. Now I'm not going to be able to do it right now because now it's just going to keep going on the same way. However, and I did get this. I no, here we go. Or you can have it facing that way. Really doesn't matter because unfortunately this is just that a plastic muzzle brake. There is no rifling in it. It is not a. Um, a scar barrel or anything like that so unfortunately there isn't anything like that uh, you do still have an orange tip if you want to leave it off which is actually also the very end of the barrel right there so you can leave this on or off if you want to I personally I'm leaving it on because I do kind of like the look and now I can't get back on to the right way um, there we go but I am sure if not by now, um, definitely in the near future, there will be 3D printed scars to go on here. So, to help with that additional rifling. Because, as I had mentioned before about the stock coming off and this part, one of the other things that this comes with are actually, um, uh, I guess you can say performance tuners. They are just these very simple orange plastic pieces and it comes with two of them and what you would do is if you wanted to up your fps and this there is no screw on it either this is literally just a push 
turn and you have your spring out and then all you have to do is just slide it on there put it right back in and now you've just upped your FPS by putting the pre-compression on the spring itself so that is really it for the blaster itself um, as far as it functioning prime it back prime it forward pull the trigger shouldn't have done that with the uh, with the lug in there but what are you gonna do uh, it's done but yeah very basic pump action springer it's how they how one works how they all work so let's take this over to the workbench open this up and we'll see how see what makes it tick and see what other unique things we could find let's go okay so we got the try on here on the workbench i'm just going to take the things off because i'm going to take them off anyway for when i actually open it up but to showcase what magazines this thing can take so first and foremost we have the one that it obviously comes with obviously it will work um here we have a worker 15 round magazine pretty standard fare most people it does have a little bit of a wibble but you know what other than that it's in there so good on that so if that one works does the 18 round curved magazines work yes they do again same thing a little bit of wobble but they work what about the worker angled magazines no because it's not an angled it's not an angled magazine well so no those do not work um my one and only <laughs> katana magazine does it work yes it does so if you have katanas you're able to utilize these and now moving on to a few obscure ones here we have the jurassic pro magazine and this is also styled in in way of the katanas as well as the nexus and the striker magazines does this work yes it does so that one works as well um and here we have the original dart zone pro 1.1 magazine and no that does not work so the only thing that this thing doesn't actually work with are dart zone pro magazines that were designed specifically for the 1.0 and the 1.1 i don't know about the two because i don't have one and an angled worker magazine because it's not an angled magazine right? so you have your options of what you want to use if you happen to have the game face try on so now that that is all said and done with um i'm just going to open this up and then we will see what we are working with okay and as always for sake of time i have already unscrewed everything now there are a few clips that you should be aware of uh one there is one on the thumbhole stock part uh you do have to pop that off if you want to separate them and on the blaster themselves, um, on the buffer tube, there is two very much like on the Striker or on the Nexus Pro. So, um, oh, and just two more things real quick. So underneath the angled foregrip, there is uh, some Picatinny rail there. So if you wanted to put your own uh, grip on it, or if you wanted to swap the angled one for a vertical foregrip, you can definitely do so. Also, I think I finally figured out because I own like one airsoft pistol, um, how the AR ones will work on it. Cause I'm like thinking, I don't, I don't know how things work, but once you take off the thumbhole stock, there is this piece right underneath it. And I believe that is where you would wind up uh, screwing in or attaching the uh, replacement AR or M4 uh, grip 
So there's that. And now that I know that, I may wind up getting a few for my, uh, my I might be uh, getting it myself. So yeah, I have all, everything's unscrewed here. Oh, no, I missed one. As with any good moment, of course, I missed something. So here we have a oh, ho. Oh, crap. I don't know where that piece went. Shit. Um, oh, never mind. I, th I think I know where it went. I think it went like. Actually, no. I think it might have went here. I don't know. I'll figure that out. But okay, so here is the insides of the Tryon. We have was that part of the safety? Oh, oh, it might have been part of the safety. I'm not sure, but well, anyway, here is your safety. So. Uh, but yeah, this is the inside here. Uh, oh, okay. So it looks like the front grip here, we have a bit of a bearing piece or at least something that definitely helps uh, slide your priming handle across to make things a little easier. Um, so we have your your very beefy plunger, um, plunger tube, your breech, all that fun stuff. Um, the front does come off very easily. And if you did want to remove the lug or if you wanted to um, up the size of your uh, barrel, you can definitely do so just by taking those off quite easily, although, yeah, this is going to be interesting here. So yeah, you have your barrel and breech assembly here. And it looks like that could be very well a, I don't know if it's a lock or not, but honestly, I'm not going to be messing with it. So that's for damn sure. So we have that, we have the plunger. We have this piece, which I'm still not 100% sure what the hell it is, um, but I will figure it out. And then your very, very beefy trigger spring um, and your trigger here. So yeah, the trigger actually pivots. So instead of it just being a straight pullback, like on most springers, it actually pivots. So that's actually neat. Uh, you have your spring rest here and then you have your uh, not spring rest i'm sorry uh your magazine release here and then i'm not 100 percent sure but i believe this may have slam fire which i believe is what this is um the other thing is you have your d prime up here and that's it that's everything that's in the try on itself so yeah um, I'm going to put try and put this thing back together. Uh, figure out exactly kind of what this piece is. And when I do, um, I will definitely make a note of that and point it out. And yeah, other than that, I'm going to get this back together. And then we will, I will give you my final thoughts on this thing. Okay, so as I've been trying to put this back together, I have learned two very important things. One, these springs are no joke. Uh, the trigger spring and the catch spring both have flung off a few times, but I have basically kind of figured out how most of this all goes back together. This piece uh, goes in this spot right here. Uh, there is a little kind of like well where you can fit a piece in and that would be this. 
uh, because as you can see here, this fits ever so slightly into uh, the edge of your catch. So I'm figuring what it does is with everything under pressure, uh, the trigger is here and what it will do is as it moves, it just disables the catch and when it goes back down, it will seat back in. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how it works. So so yeah, um, I'm going to figure out how to get this all back together without exploding. And I'll give you my final thoughts on this. Okay, so before I get into my final thoughts, I did want to make one note about putting this thing back together. So, much like the Kronos, you basically have to have the plunger system in a primed position in order to get everything back together. Um, you saw when I was figure, when I had figured out the catch piece, I was like struggling to kind of keep everything down together. Well, after a couple of tries and figuring out exactly what I needed to do, and I finally got this back together, once I did, I didn't have to retake it apart to figure out I had to fix something, so that was definitely a plus. But, yeah, that's a, just a little side note. If you take this apart and put it back together and having trouble trying to keep everything together because the springs in this thing are insane, uh, yeah, that's how I wound up doing it. But now moving on to my final thoughts on this thing. So, first and foremost... There are a lot of options for pump action half dart springers out there. Uh, between homemades and what's coming to market between worker and dart zone, um, where does the game faces uh, try on really kind of lie in there? And I gotta say, it's actually pretty, for me right now, it's pretty high up there because it has a lot going for it. It has a couple of misses, but compared to what is out there, they're not big major ones. They're actually very minor in the grand scheme of things. Um, one is, I would have liked to have seen this come with a scar. Um, this little muzzle brake is nice and everything. It's very decorative. However, for what this thing can hit, um, and I did an average of it. If anything, I can always post it, make a community post of it or whatnot. Uh, but yeah, this thing on... Actually, no, I'll just mention it here now. So, as far as FPS on this thing goes, you're actually getting pretty good um, performance out of it. Uh, using the darts that it came with, the Chevron darts, um, I was averaging 160 with no spacers on this, and while utilizing the, um, the Red Max Pro darts, uh, those were averaging about 150, maybe 155. I'll have everything popping up here and also any notations of actual averages uh with one spacer this actually got bumped up to about 185 with the uh chevron darts and 175 or 180 uh with max striker darts and then with the two space rounds two spacers on this this is hitting about 210 with the stock spring and those spacers and about 200 or so with max starts. Um, so yeah, you have great versatility with this thing right out of the box. Now you're not going to be hitting any HVZ uh, numbers with it. For that, you would definitely need a tune down spring and no spacers. Um, but yeah, with that, one thing I would have liked to have seen come with this is a scar barrel. Um, Worker does make their own and I know one comes with the Swift. I don't believe one will come with the Harrier. Uh, Dart Zone doesn't have any of that stuff. So, but yeah, a nice scar barrel just to add a little bit of rifling to make sure that those darts stay crisp would be great. Now, I haven't done a range test on this because right now it is getting dark. So I can't take this outside to play around with that aspect of it. Uh, but once I do, I'll maybe make a, po a community post about it, whether or not I was right or wrong on if this needs a scar or not. More likely than not, I would say yes, just because of the sheer physics and how we know everything works. Um, the other thing I would have liked to have seen with this 
is a holder or a spot somewhere in the stock or in the grip of where you can actually store those spacers because right now there is no place to put that and I'm honestly afraid of actually losing them somewhere in my shop eventually but uh, something like that would have been nice to be in included um, even if you take the stock off and like had put something like right here that would have been really great because um, then we would have had storage for the spacers rather than keeping them on here which I do not plan on doing um, just because I don't want the spring keeping that pre-compression I'd rather just put those on when I'm ready to use it than have it on all the time um, as it as it goes right now my swift uh, actually I do not keep the spring in that one at all now I keep my spring and all that kind of stuff in my Nexus that's fine it is what it is whatever um, so I'm a little contradictory on things but whatever now as far as this pair, pairs against the competitions that I have mentioned uh, being the striker and the Nexus Pro and the uh, worker Swift now I didn't mention the Harrier because the Harrier hasn't really it it's been slow rolled out some places have it some places don't um, I know out of darts currently has it on pre-order and they're not getting they're not going to be shipping out till mid-march um, whereas this is mid-february I already have this this has been out for a month and a half now the Swift has been out for a while that and uh, the Nexus and the uh, the Nexus and the striker have also been out for quite some time to make their footprint so that's why I'm kind of comparing this against this I'm not putting this against the Talon Claw or a Caliburn because those are technically homemade and I'm going against like actual production models um, so with that being said this actually is kind of almost the best of both worlds um, out of the box it's ready to go you don't have to do any fiddling with it uh, it doesn't break down like a striker does it's mono body like the nexus pro and the uh, striker oh, i'm sorry it doesn't it, the swift breaks down i think i just I, I don't know what i just said words are hard sometimes um but the way this performs as well with that priming system with those little bearings in there it makes priming this thing so nice and like clean like when I was doing my testing having both of those spacers in there I was not struggling trying to prime this at all I have the spacers still in there which is why I'm not priming it um, but yeah the spacers don't affect the prime whatsoever it makes it a little heavier but it's still a very smooth prime and very very clean um, the fact that this is designed strictly for half darts um, definitely gives it a one up over the Nexus and the striker because you don't have to worry about that priming slot that those th those two have uh, you also don't have to worry about an adapter so you just have to make sure you have your magazines and you're good to go now the other upside to this is the price point this is retailing for eighty dollars and as i am recording this because i had just seen it on the website uh they are offering ten percent off of your first order so there's that so you're getting this for a really really good deal yes out of the box the nexus and the striker have this beat on price because you can get those for about 50 bucks either from walmart or target um you know pick your poison on those uh those are those retail for 49.99 this retails for 79.99 as far as the worker swift goes that is a big ebb and flow because i have seen prices on that for 165 from some places to i believe out of darts has it for 185 and i have actually seen on the worker website directly that it goes for 289 so already you're paying almost double for a worker swift when this is half of the price um the other thing is i do want to point out that the worker swift and obviously the nexus and striker do have more 
third-party accessories and parts and upgrades available to them. I have not seen much coming out for this other than the known, you can take this off and replace it with some airsoft parts. Um, but I have not seen any new uh, springs for this thing. I have not seen people doing any spacers for it or really anything else. Uh, but with that being said, you really actually don't kind of need it. Um, the way this is designed, everything is really robust and you don't need replacement parts for it. Like with the Worker Swift, I paid 180 for it when I had gotten it. And I, they have the problem with the locking lug on the barrel cracking. My original one did. I did get a replacement for it. But I opted to, rather than risk it again, I just opted to purchase the metal one along with the metal catch as well because I got the upgraded springs for it. So I have like three or four barrels for it, springs, re uh, replacement catch, replacement trigger, and replacement barrel lug and breech. So, I'm already into that thing for well more money than I would have, than I, you know, initially spent for it. Uh, same thing for my uh, Nexus Pro. I mean, yeah, it was one, it was $50 when I got it, but between the metal parts kits, the 3D printed kits, the barrels, and all that kind of stuff, I've definitely upped the price onto that thing for damn sure. Like, that thing most probably cost about as much as uh, my Swift when I first got it. Where, again, this is only $80, and you're getting a ready-to-go blaster right out of the box. And if you want to up the power on it, you got that. The only thing you can't do is just out of the box is basically tune it down. Um, but, yeah. So, that, I think, really covers everything on the try-on. If you're on the fence about it or want an idea of, like, a good out-of-the-box competitive... Uh, Dark Blaster, honestly, this is really the way to go. It's, pre it's pretty damn affordable. Um, you get your upgrades with it in the form of those spacers. And, yeah. So, honestly, I think I've said all I really can about the try-on. So, that's where I'm going to end this video. So, thank you all for joining me on this one. And, as always, if you enjoy the content we put here on the channel, please throw us a like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the Triumph if you've played with it, or do you, or how do you think it stands up in the uh, wide array of the pump action springers within the hobby? Let me know in the comments down below. I love reading them. And ooh, don't forget to click that little bell icon. Otherwise, you may not know when me and Arlene are doing our silliness here on the channel. And we do have a PO box if you want to send us a letter or snail mail or something or whatever. I don't, you know, it's it's there. But again, thank you all for joining me. I'll see you guys next time. Later.